Hello everyone, this is Zero Guardian back for another episode of Zero Guardian Plays through his Steam library. Today I'm playing Faster Than Light. Uh, this is a um, kind of roguelike uh, game where like you, you have different scenarios that you just kind of repeat over and over again. I mean, obviously the scenarios are different, but like you just it's just one level at a time essentially. Kind of like the old school, like... Um, Zelda games and stuff like that, where like you were, you know, in an instance and did something. Uh, a more modern game that's very roguelike would be uh, Binding of Isaac, which is another game that I will be playing at some point this year. Uh, I don't know when yet, but obviously that will uh, will come up, and so I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, with Faster Than the Light, you're going to be in charge of a spaceship and controlling the crew and the, the ship, and it's like you have to move your guys around to repair things and stuff like that. Um, I've uh, um, seen, uh, you know, some videos and so forth. Again, you know, I've never played any of the games in this series. These are games that I've purchased on my Steam library and just never got around to. Uh, this is one that I've always wanted to try. Um, uh, hopefully it's, it's fairly entertaining. Um, we'll obviously find out here pretty quick. Um, before we get started, I, uh, I do want to uh, just remind everybody, you know, join us on the forums. That's forums.spacepotatoes.com. Uh, you'll, you know, on the forums we have a regularly scheduled game night every week. This week we're going to be playing War Thunder, which is a terrific, uh, you know, flight simulator, kind of arcade simulator. Uh, based uh, with World War II f uh, planes and its Axis versus Allies, so you're flying around, you know, f uh, dogfighting with other pilots, uh, shooting down, you know, players that are uh, piloting bomber aircraft that are trying to destroy, like, your ground troops and you're trying to destroy theirs at the same time. Uh, they've also recently added in support for uh, people to control tanks and stuff like that. Um, although I'll have to admit I've never I haven't played with that functionality yet, so that might be something that comes up this weekend. I don't know, or this Friday. Um, and uh, uh, you know, so of course you can join us for those. Uh, we do vote every month uh, for the next month's games. So uh, while we've already voted for the months for February or the games for February, you could join the forums now and later this month be able to vote in, on what games we'll be playing next month. So you know, it's another reason to join the forums. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there's just a great community, a lot of good people there. So, you know, it's definitely something you should look forward to and, and uh, um, you know, participate in. Uh, uh, just a reminder, I am going to be doing these videos every Monday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time and every Friday at 2 p.m. Central. Uh, today I'm obviously playing Faster and Light. Uh, Monday I played Rainbow Six Vegas 2, which I have to admit I wasn't a big fan of. Um, we'll just leave it at that because I don't need to rant anymore. Um, and then this Friday, I'm going to be playing Grid Autosport. That is a game I am definitely looking forward to. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint me like Rainbow Six Vegas 2 did. But, uh, that would be very difficult to do considering they've, uh, it's supposedly be an improvement on Grid 2, which I did enjoy playing. I just, there were a lot of things I had, like, kind of niggling things that bugged me with that game and kind of... Uh, made it to where it was difficult for me to enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the original Grid, which was just amazing. I mean, that was such a fun multiplayer game. Uh, and, and single player, too. Um, but, you know, so hopefully Grid Autosport works out really well. Uh, um, so join me for that. Again, that's Friday at 2 p.m. Okay, be, uh, uh, right before we get started, I do want to uh, point out that uh, or, or I do want to go over the options. This is something that I always like to do on games just so you have an idea of what options are available. Now, considering this game is 2D and there's, you know, there, there's not a, a lot to the graphics and everything, there's not a whole lot of options, so it'll be fairly quick to go over. Um, you can see here, uh, you can set your screen resolution, uh, well, sort of screen resolution. Um, you, I have it set on on stretch, which actually fills my entire monitor at its resolution I natively set it up for. Um, however, it does have an option for native, but when I switched it over to that, for some reason on my monitor, and this may just be a limitation with the program, uh, I don't know, but uh, my default re or my native resolution on my monitor is 2560 by 1440. Um, this one defaulted it down to 1920 by 1080 when I set it to native, which I thought was a little odd. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. It may not work properly for you, but I found stretch works really well. Um, obviously, uh, you know, you got a couple other settings here. I'm not sure what the dynamic backgrounds mean, but I'm going to leave that on. 
Uh, and uh, I do think it's cool that they have a colorblind mode. I actually have a friend who plays computer games that, that is colorblind. And, uh, and so seeing stuff like this in games is really, really useful for, um, you know, players like him where sometimes he has difficulty with seeing, you know, the differences between different colors and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, event choice selection, I'm just gonna uh, yeah i don't know what some of these mean i'm sure i'll kind of understand it as we start playing um you do have the ability to configure your keys and there are a lot of keys to configure um so just something to keep in mind uh i don't think this game really needs to have all of these keys i guess you could use them for like hot keys to just kind of sort but i think most of the controls are available on the screen when you're playing uh, and then lastly it does have the ability to adjust the music volume separate from the sound volume I'd like to see a few more audio options, but with considering the how basic the game is and so forth, I can kind of give some leeway on this one. At least they let me adjust the music volume separate from the sound. That I am definitely uh, appreciate. Uh, I do like this music I've, that I've been listening to so far. I think it's kind of cool, kind of synthy and so forth. So, um, you know, I'm not saying the music's bad, but, you know, when I'm doing a stream like this, being able to adjust the music down so it doesn't interfere with me talking to you is really nice. So, anyways. Uh, so, I figured what I would do is I went through a little bit of the tutorial just early on just to make sure that the uh, the game was working okay and everything. Um, I figured I'd go ahead and go through the tutorial once more because, A, I didn't finish it all the way. And then, B, uh, that gives you an opportunity to kind of see, like, some of the information available for it. I'll try to, you know, kind of add additional input you know when i can um hopefully the tutorial doesn't take too long to get through it did pop up saying the tutorial doesn't they tried to make it short so hopefully it is um but i think that that would definitely be better than me just jumping into a new game because like i said i've didn't even complete the tutorial so i'm not gonna know what the heck to do so anyways i'm gonna jump in here and we're gonna get started and check out and find out how weather faster than light is a lot of fun or maybe not so fun like another game i played earlier this week Right, so I am the captain of a Federation starship. Heck yeah, Federation is currently being torn apart, oh no, by vicious rebels. Your ship is carrying data vital to the defense of the Federation. Ooh. You'll be traveling through dangerous sectors of the galaxy with the rebel fleet in hot pursuit. Make it to the exit beacon of each sector before the rebels can catch you. Ah, interesting. Your ship, the Kestrel, is the focus of the typical game view. I'm assuming this is the Kestrel. Circular icons at the bottom of the screen, your ship's primary systems. All right, so we got uh, shields, engines, med bay, oxygen, and weapons. Yes, weapons. I have dual lasers, nice, okay. And then on the right are my subsystems. Unlike systems, uh, they do not require power from the reactor. Okay, that's nice. So piloting, okay. Sensors and doors. Blast doors, interesting, okay. Uh, hover your mouse over any system icon to get more information about it. Yep, I was just doing that. And then at the top left, we have the hull meter, the shield meter. All right, so that's this. Uh, and current resources are in the top. All right, so we've got fuel, we have missiles, we have no drone parts. And I have apparently one crew member. We should get going, but it looks like your engines are currently powered down. Well, they were just powered up a minute ago. Green system boxes are powered, white system boxes are unpowered, and providing no benefit. All right, so we're gonna power up our engines. Yay. Left click on the engine system icon and power, yeah. Try to keep your vital systems fully powered. Right click to depower system if you want to reroute its power. So I can left click to add, right click to remove. So, I don't want shields, yeah. No, I think we'll get shields. Oh no! Warning, Ener engine's critical. What? Why are my engines critical? crew cannot fix the ship's hull, but they can fix the engines. Select your crew members using left click. Okay, so, so I've got some crew members here, so I'm going to select these two. And let's see, I can right click. Okay, so I guess that's their destination. And because the game's paused, they're not moving. So if I unpause it, we'll move over there. Okay. There we go. So 
they're currently fixing up my hull or my engines. So fighting low oxygen and fire will hurt the crew. See that <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna geek out a little bit here on English. So, so this is why I've always been a fan of the Oxford comma. That's the third comma here. So fighting low oxygen and fire will hurt the crew. So why would they fight low oxygen and fire? I mean, I can understand fire, but fighting low oxygen. But then I think what they really mean is fighting low oxygen and fire will hurt the crew. So anyways, that's why I always like the Oxford comma. Anyways, I'm going to stop geeking out about English now. Awesome, your engines are now repaired. Notice that repaired systems will automatically try to repower themselves to their last power state. Some systems can be manned by crew members to provide a small bonus to the systems. Crew members will automatically man any functioning system in their room. The silhouette above the power bars shows if that system is manned. All right, so the engines are manned right now, nice. So if I move him over here, he'll man the weapons. Woohoo! Nice. Cool. So what about the power bar? Yeah, okay. Oh no! A fire! You can send your groomers to put it out, but it's less... Uh, but let's take advantage of your airlock. Open one of the airlock doors by left-clicking on it. All the air is leaving and the fire goes out. Nice. Now that the engines are fixed and fires are out, we should FTL jump to the next location. If you don't currently have a pilot, you should probably send a crewman to the helm. Well, we got a pilot, so I think we're okay. Cool. I think we should probably close that. Allow oxygen to resupply that room. Nice. All right, so now I click the jump button. This is the beacon map. A ship marks your current location. Hover your mouse over a location to get information about it. An unvisited location, unvisited location, unvisited location, unvisited location. So we want to get here. So the question is, do we want to take the quickest route or maybe a lengthy one? head to this one, so I'm going to do this first. Every new location, you will have an event like this. You might have multiple choices available to you at the event. In this example, a weak pirate ship is trying to destroy you. One, continue. Two, special blue choices like these are unlocked by having certain upgrades or equipment. They are nearly always a good choice. Welcome to combat. You can use spacebar or middle mouse to pause the game at any time to strategize, give commands, or reallocate your power. Try to pause the game now. Paused! You'll need to power your weapons to fight. The amount of power required is pictured in the weapon box marked below. Left click on it to power it. A powered weapon turns white. Right click depowers weapon. Oh, okay, and then left click on a powered weapon to arm it, then target a room and the enemy ship by left clicking on it. Ah, cool. Uh, let's see, I can take out their shields, weapon, or maybe not take out, but oh gosh, he, he's firing at me. That jerk. Uh, let's go for engines. Take out his power, then he won't be able to do shit. <laughs> Weapon will fire when ready. Make sure the game is unpaused. All right, so hit and pause, unpause. They took out my shields, or potentially. Oh no, you shot. Your two-shot laser cannot penetrate the pirate's level two shields, but luckily he can't get through your shields either. Nope, every two powered bars in your shield system nets you one more shield, okay. 
Looks like we need some help, more help to get through the shield. Some events can provide items. This one is providing you with an Artemis missile launcher. Nice. Power that one. Alright. Shooting it expends your missile stock, but the missiles pierce through all enemy shields. Use the missile to damage the enemy shield system, and then your laser can cut through as well. Ah, nice. Alright, so we're gonna use that and hit there. Ha 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 Alright, if you need a reminder of what each system does, choose your targets widely, though weapons and shields often make good choices. Now defeat the pirate. Alright. You destroyed the pirate ship as salvage you gain from left to right. Some fuel, missiles, scrap, and another weapon. Note the reward resource icons corresponding to your reserves along the top of the screen. Okay, cool. Nice. Weapons or drones are added to your cargo if there is no more room in their respective systems. I'll click on the ship info button. Ship. requires a lot of power. This is your equipment screen. You can see more detailed information about the weapons, drones. Click and drag your new halberd beam over the Artemis to swap them out, then hit accept. Oops, your weapon systems, Max Power 2, is not upgraded enough to support your new weapon. Power requirement 3. Open your ship screen back up so we can fix this. Spending scrap, you can also upgrade your reactor at the bottom of the menu, which is important for keeping everything fully powered. All right. Uh, left click on your weapon system to upgrade it, then click accept to close the upgrades. All right, so we're gonna spend part of my scrap here. Okay, so it gets more expensive with each level. Interesting. So that's three levels. Uh, I want one more, and then maybe one of these. Except there we go. Nice. Now I've got both. Final tip: you can rearrange your weapons in the weapon system toolbar by clicking and dragging. If your weapon system is damaged, this order determines the order they are depowered, right to left. Okay, yeah, I want that one depowered first. So that's it for the basics. Good luck out there. Press continue to quit this tutorial. Okay, all right, well, that's that's not too bad. That's pretty pretty easy. I guess we're going to jump in and uh, see what's what. All right, rename. Yeah, let's name this something else. The Kestrel's kind of cool, but uh, what could I do? I can't think of a good name right now. I'm just going to leave it. Alright. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, so. Oh, okay, so you can get different ships as you... Uh... Oh, cool. content. I have no idea what that means. I'll do normal for now. Yeah, uh, this looks good. Yeah. We'll hit start. Why not? 
They need to carry is vital to remaining federation to the remaining federation fleet. You need to apply the journey, so make sure to explore each sector. Tip cloaking. Cloaking prevents enemies from firing on your ship or charging their weapons. It also increases your base evasion by 60. Very interesting. Okay. Alright, so we got some scrap, a little bit of fuel, some missiles, and a couple of drone parts. Alright. So we're good on hull, and uh, let's see here. Okay. Alright, so distress. Someone might need help. An unvisioned nebula here will make fleet suit slower, but will disrupt your sensors. Hmm. Interesting. Sector 1. Civilian sector. Uh, I think I'm going to try a direct path through the nebulas, so I'm just going to go here and then work my way that way, so we'll see what this is. Encountered a refugee ship drifting in space. It looks as if it was fleeing the rebel advance and ran out of fuel. Its distress beacon's active, but you're not sure anyone is on board. Hail them. It's relieved to hear from you. They're running low on supplies. This is just a trade. Three missiles for two. I don't know how important the drone parts are, but I'd imagine missiles are pretty important. Mitchell shoots across your bow and the jump completes. Your scans quickly reveal a ship with pirate markings pursuing an unknown vessel. Pirate has Damn it! We weren't expecting company. Stay out of this and you could profit. Ooh, so they're gonna bribe us or do we want to attack them? So they're neutral. They don't have many hulls, shields. Their weapons aren't powered yet. Hmm. Nope, pirate's going down. <laughs> All right, pause. Oh, weapons are charging up. Okay. More weapons. Okay. Oh, mine are charged. Let's see what happens. I can wait for my weapons to charge. the pirates out. You will die. Oh. <laughs> oh.
fix the hole. There we go. to the nebula. Danger. Hmm. I'm gonna ignore this pirate. It's kinda cool. To see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination where the ships at the small station is offering a deal. Mm, fuel for drones. Mm. Okay. I like how there's, uh, you know, missions that you run into that are, you know, not. Uh, I like how there are, there are missions that are not just combat, like you know, there's some like trade or maybe even diplomatic, or I like the fact that you can jump into a system and, you know, there's a pirate fighting somebody else, and so, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so a heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before you have time to make contact with them, they fade into the nebula. Hmm. I bet it's a trap. have to go oh I should have looked at that previously so I'm gonna have to go this way oh man oh snap I didn't realize this oh this is bad I should have looked at this information sooner Ugh. Accept their surrender. Guys level up. Piloting skills, engine skills, weapons, repair. Nice. Ooh, 
ten percent faster charge. Like it. All right, cool. Yeah, this is uh, going to be interesting. I have a feeling they're going to catch up to me here, and then I'm going to potentially get away. We'll see. Rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. Their weapons are charged, but they're not firing yet. not crazy powerful. Don't have terribly decent shields. Do I intervene or avoid? I can definitely use some supplies. Yes. Okay, so I would have had to have chosen that before. Uh, okay, all right. Well, that's, at least I know that now. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Be in rebel territory. My planet shows signs of habitation. Great beauty. A rudimentary automated planetary defense system is looping its mission. Warning: quarantine level five is under effect. If you check. Okay. Yep. Not going down there. Automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Well, I'm gonna defend the outpost then. Liking this. This is this is a cool. Give me ship out damaging the enemy ship's drone system. Interesting. How do I get drones? I've got drone parts. Using a drone consumes one drone part. Uh, so how do you do drones? Sensors, doors, piloting. Open all doors, close all doors. Okay, so I can save the positions. I like that. Everybody full health. Okay. Moving on.
First you appear to be arrived in an empty system, but a ship appears from behind a planet and hails you. Ha ha! I am the Dread Pirate Tuco. Prepare to die. Alright, Dread Pirate Tuco. Uh, I think you're un misunderstanding what's going on here, because you're about to die. Intruders detected. Nope, not getting away. <laughs> systems. Alright, I can upgrade the subsystem now. Nice! And now I can do that. And I have two shields. Ooh, sweet. I like it. Twenty-five. All right, so do that when and if I can. On completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Uh, I don't have that. What the hell is that green thing? do that. I got plenty of fuel right now. Exit. Yay! A number of ships are stationed around a rest stop. You immediately receive a message saying, if you're looking for some bodies to fill your ship, you've come to the right place. Aw, I don't have those. controlled rebel controlled unidentified civilian sector hostile sector nebula sector hostile sector what the 
heck does Mantis Controlled mean? I guess we're gonna find out. That's the only problem I have right now. Okay, so there's the exit. All right, so I'm going to map this out this time so I don't make that mistake again. Uh, so here, there, 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 there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hmm. Let's admit you know having all of these that interconnect with this is actually really nice so i could actually make my way like this way and then do this to get some additional stuff yeah let's do that a derelict and still smoking mantis vessel floats by the battle must have been recent and surviving crew beams aboard prepare for a fight starts me all over, doesn't it? Wow, that really does. Uh, okay, that was interesting. Alright, note to self. Don't go into Manus controlled space. Alright, so there's my exit. Alright, I like that. So, I'm thinking... So I have to go... Okay, so I have to go this way. So I'll probably go there, 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 there. Yeah, there, 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 there. There, 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 there. And then maybe in, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how quickly they approach. from a nearby planet. Ooh. I want to see what an away party's like. You find a hidden Federation outpost. They message you. Quick, we just got word from a sister outpost that they've been discovered by the rebels are under care. You still loyal to the... Go save them. Add a quest marker to your map. Uh -huh. So where are they at? There. Okay. So, yeah. In a civilian star system nearby colony uh, contacts you. We've got a rogue rebel ship harassing the system. Do you want to find it? Go looking for the ship. Far too much time spent searching. You're finally able to track him down. You go to the, to the fight, wondering just how much of a head start you've lost on the rebel fleet. Uh oh. Ooh, that's not good. bad. Go fix the oxygen first. Oh, this is bad. 
got no way to repair my crew, or at least not a good way. Come on, repair the O2. Repair the O2. Okay, good. I can repair that. good um this is not going to go well I have a feeling I lost my weapons guy shit 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 this is no bueno okay um crap Greeted by numerous computer alerts, the nearby automated rebel scout has used a local satellite to deploy a virus to disrupt your shield systems. Oh shit! Thousands of colonists have had to had their supply lines disrupted and have found themselves in dire straits. It seems that the animals are sympathetic and are distributing what little supplies they can spare. Oh no, that wouldn't be. I'm too much of a nice guy. Okay, let's get these quests done and then I'll head to the exit. Oh 
this isn't good. Fire out, get the fire out. No! Shit! Oh man, fucking good. I can I can see why this game would be a lot of fun to play. I, I definitely can because uh, some of the stuff going on here is pretty addictive. There's a lot of complications, and you know suddenly there's like shit going on all over the place. You're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but okay, increase weapons. All right, so let's see here. I want to. That and then we want to try to get the next level of that. Alright. Jump. Ooh, this is. Try to get that first destination. Of course. systems. Ooh. I'm thinking that. Yeah. I think that can be really interesting. All right. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go very well. Oh, man. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, this is interesting. Okay, so unlock the NG ship when you get to the fifth sector. There are a number of rumors of advanced ship construction in the Rebel Stronghold. Defeat the flagship with any layout of the NG cruiser. Defeat the flagship with any layout of the, F of the Federation cruiser. So that's that. Okay. Tice the Lannis with a valuable fleet. Unlock four ships in addition to the Kestrel cruiser to unlock that ship. Stealth cruiser type A. Oh, Mantis cruiser type A. Famous Mantis thief, Kazapleth Killick, owns <laughs> this ship. You'll have to convince him to help you. Alternate unlock defeat the flagship with any land of the Zoltan cruiser. Interesting. Carry is vital, yes. Alright, tip bomb weapons, bomb to teleport directly onto either ships. Oh, that's kinda cool. Alright, so here. Yeah, I guess I'll fly through the nebulous. Thank you. 
Bill's in really bad shape. I'm not doing very good at this game. <laughs> oh, it's definitely it's definitely fun to play though. I do feel like it's getting a little repetitive, but uh, uh, you know, I can see you know the the draw to you know try to get that better starting setup and then you know. But I do feel like there's a lot of randomness to it too, so it's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess I could do easy and try to unlock some stuff. Might be a little easier. interesting I do uh, it's it's definitely an interesting game I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up though because I feel like you know it's pretty much the same thing over and over again and, uh, 
uh, I think everybody's got a pretty good gist of what the game is about. So um, that's Faster Than Light. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, I definitely think it's a really interesting game. Definitely roguelike where you're just kind of playing, you know, one level at a time and then moving on. Uh, I think that uh, I, I like the premise behind the game. I think it's really cool, you know, the spaceships and the layouts. Uh, I like the combat mechanics. I think, you know, being able to target specific systems and rooms and so forth. Uh, I could definitely see how, you know, getting to the point where you can micromanage things a little better and maybe maybe I need to pause a little more often to move stuff around uh, you know probably would have helped me out a little bit but you know I'm just starting out you know like I said I've never played the game until today so uh, you know a lot of that stuff a lot of those advanced tactics I'm probably not that familiar with yet so I could but I could definitely see how you know people somebody would enjoy this game they'd want to play it build up try to go for that like you know ultimate run and uh, you know and unlocking the additional ships that are available i think that'd be really cool i kind of wish the game had you know a couple of ships to start with and maybe a couple of layouts so that you know when you're first starting out i suppose if you're having a rough time uh you know it's not terribly difficult to you know play the game slightly differently but uh uh i think that overall i think faster than light's a, a really fun game and uh um i can definitely recommend it to people you know if you're looking for just a an easy game that uh well i don't know about easy but you know a uh, a game that's easy to learn maybe difficult to master but you know just a game you could just play for 10 or 15 minutes at a time you know just casual game or so forth uh, yeah, I definitely could see somebody, you know, enjoying this, playing it. Uh, nice thing is, is, you know, it's a fairly simple game. It's not very intensive, so you could probably play this on pretty low-end computer. And then on top of that, uh, it doesn't take up much space. So, you know, even leaving it installed and then, you know, having it there to fire up at some point, uh, down the road, just, you know, just as kind of a fun time waster, I think would be, uh, uh, a definite option. So, uh... Uh, as always, don't forget to join us on the forums. That's forums.spacepotatoes.com. Uh, again, we are going to be playing War Thunder this Friday. Uh, that's a it's a lot of fun flight uh, simulator, kind of arcadey flight simulator, uh, where uh, um, you're flying World War II uh, planes and uh, you know it's Axis versus Allies. Uh, we are going to be streaming that. So if you've never played the game, you want to see what it's like. Definitely join us for that. That should be going on around 8.30 or so p.m. on Friday. Uh, I don't want to give a definitive time yet because we really haven't, like, kind of sussed that out. And sometimes people show up late and stuff like that. It's just one of those things where, you know, we have it scheduled for a range of time. And then people kind of show up and we do it whenever. So, uh, you know. Join us for that. If you join the forums, of course, you'd be able to join us for playing War Thunder. You know, it's a game that can have, you know, a lot of people in the same game. So, you know, definitely join us. That wouldn't be a problem. Uh, and uh, I know some people really enjoy that game. You can spend a lot of time and so forth uh, in that game, kind of leveling up and getting some of the higher end planes and so forth. Uh, so, you know, if that's the kind of game you enjoy where those really deep unlocks and so forth, that's the, definitely the game for you. But anyways, this is Zero Guardian. I am signing off. I hope you enjoyed Faster Than Light. Pick it up if you thought it'd be fun to play. I can definitely recommend it. And uh, I will catch you on Friday at 2 p.m. for Grid Autosport. Check you later.